Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to another EPL breakdown for Match Week 29, Saturday, March 2nd, 2019. I'm really excited about this slate. Let's just jump right into it. I don't want to waste too much time. The first game on the slate, we have Man City making the trip from Manchester all the way down to the the south coast to play Bournemouth. We have Huddersfield making a really quick trip down south to play, or I shouldn't say really quick trip, a massive trip down south uh, just as well uh, to play Brighton. Crystal Palace uh, making the trip from London all the way up north to play Burnley. Southampton making the trip from down south up to Manchester to play United. Cardiff making the trip from Wales, a really quick trip uh, to uh, Wolves uh, into Wolverhampton. Uh, and the final game, a really clap, crap late hammer slate. We have Newcastle making the trip up north into London to play West Ham. So yeah, let's just jump right into this. The first game on the slate, we have Man City making the trip into Bournemouth. And right away we can know uh, this is a Man City slate. But as always, with uh, lots of ownership and lots of responsibility uh, comes massive edges that we can jump on the other end to. Uh, so for the most part, though, City are coming in here pretty hot. They've won four straight, uh, four of their past five, eight of their past ten. Uh, they've gone three straight games without conceding. But away from home, it is a little bit of a different story. They are a different team. They've won only four or six of their previous ten uh, away from home, which may not sound the worst until you remember it is Man City and they're basically a perfect team. They've actually lost three of their previous six away games, and they've conceded in three of their previous five and five of their previous seven away games so there's a really good chance this game they are conceding which immediately you can take away the ceilings and uh, taking them in GPP in particular Ederson and uh, any of the wingbacks now uh, I think there could be uh, some slight discussion for Ederson and GPP just because he will be so low owned and not many people are willing to spend that up and Bournemouth just hasn't been very good as of late we'll get there in a moment but at the same time here their wingbacks are just simply too expensive for a team that is going to concede and frankly there isn't really uh, a, a clear cut starter between Danilo or Mendy at the moment and most likely what's going to happen is that they're going to split minutes and on the other side of the field Kyle Walker is basically pointless in DFS really good real life player but in DFS he, he just does not convert well whatsoever so I'm not interested <coughs> excuse me in the defenders of City uh, and when we get into the midfielders it, it's uh, a big issue right now is with the minutes uh, for Man City in particular in a very tight part of their season for schedule scheduling there's going to be a lot of rotation uh phil foden's going to be seeing the field so like it isn't necessarily going to be a play for him it's really restricted minutes across the board here uh the only player that i'm necessarily looking at super hardcore from man city i say super hardcore meaning more than anyone else is uh kevin de bruyne uh for only 8k he's cash viable why i really like him so much is that um, from only uh, 8K, he's putting up uh, 2.5 right around there for a floor. Uh, and on top of that, he hasn't scored in like forever. And that's even before he got hurt. Like if you consider his injury and take that time out, he still hasn't scored and been involved in the goal in ages and ages. So um, yeah, I'm really looking for Kevin De Bruyne to break his goose egg this slate, especially against a team like Bournemouth. I think he could line up very easily for a goal and assist, even a goal and two assists. I don't see him scoring more than a goal simply because he doesn't get himself involved in enough literal goal scoring opportunities, but uh, goal creation uh, through the roof, both sites get Kevin De Bruyne into your cards this slate. I, he's probably one of my top plays of the entire slate. Now, that being said, uh, Aguero is up there as well because he's scoring at such a high rate right now. He is going to draw a ton of ownership and he does have a ton of salary. So, I think there's a lot of warrant to fading Aguero simply because, like I mentioned earlier, they're running into a serious amount of uh, minute restrictions at the moment and they're trying to juggle player minutes to make sure no one ends up getting hurt uh, like Jesus. And uh, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that Aguero is going to do bad, but what that means is that you're operating unlimited minutes for the most expensive salary in the slate and I like to look at these situations like stack the good the pros and the cons and eventually the cons may not reach the pros but the cons stack enough that you have to be concerned about what Aguero can do from 10.8k unlimited minutes um, now 
The question would then be is where we look outside that. And it isn't necessarily that there's going to be another 90-minute player. And that's the real concern from uh, one of the real concerns for me and City this slate is that uh, their minutes are really shot. And across all of their role players, except for Kevin De Bruyne, who I really see as the only viable 90-minute option, despite coming back half recently for minutes, uh, uh, or from injury, excuse me, again, it wouldn't surprise me to see him lose out on minutes. Now, my real concern for Man City here, I'm going to kind of go out on a limb and give you the lowdown of something I've been picking on for the past couple of seasons, and it's Man City without Fernandinho is a completely different team. And I'm dead serious about this. For multiple seasons now, when Fernandinho is not in the lineup, City are not the same team whatsoever. They struggle to, pre- to create offense, which is saying a lot considering he's a defensive midfielder. And what ends up happening a lot of times is that someone like John Stones ends up playing defensive midfield, and City just don't do well. Now, what's really strange about City is they tend to do really well when they do certain things, and they tend to, and that really well, excuse me, is near perfect. Perfection. And once they don't do those set things, they're not as perfect anymore. And generally speaking, their salaries and ownership demand perfection, especially uh, whenever we're looking at a slate like this. So I'm really not that interested in anyone other than Kevin De Bruyne. I think he has the floor and the potential ceiling uh, without the risk that every single other player is carrying on City. Um, whether it be the wingers, uh, I don't see Mares getting any time at all. So there's a really good chance you could get Leroy Sané getting set pieces and a bunch of crosses from 9.2K. I don't hate that idea, but honestly, I'd rather just stick with Kevin De Bruyne, uh, both as a little bit of salary discount, ownership discount, and a ceiling that's waiting to happen that may be a little bit hidden. Uh, now to jump over to Bournemouth, a lot of people are going to be really concerned over Bournemouth because they just got absolutely slammed by Arsenal uh, over the midweek. Now, the fact is is that Bournemouth is growing into one of the heaviest home away split teams in the league. Uh, they, they're actually one of the worst away teams in the entire league. Now, obviously, this late, we're getting them at home, so we don't really have to worry about that. But they are winless in four straight games. But at the same time, they're undefeated in five straight home games, and they've only lost three of their 14 home games this season. So it is a real thing for Bournemouth to go home and just not lose, which may not be a direct result or a direct selection process, but at the same time, we can fade the other side for a huge ceiling, which this slate happens to be City. And it's not like uh, Bournemouth... Uh, well, I shouldn't say... Actually, I will say the direct opposite of that. Um, they are undefeated in five straight home, but uh, they, they been really bad against big six sides they've only won once so far this season against a big six side against Chelsea but that happened quite recently just a couple of games home games ago now they've uh, conceded in only two of their last five home games and they've conceded less than uh, one goal in four of their five home games so so it, it's uh, or I should say one goal or less in four of their five home games so it this is a situation here where we can look at someone like Boric and know that he's not going to be a complete flop right off the bat. So uh, that is something to think about as we go into the process here. Now, um, just to contrast this a little bit, like I said, they're, they've lost nine straight away games uh, and they've only had three away wins all season. Converse that they've lost only three times at home and they've lost 11 times away. So uh, they're just a much better, uh, much, much, much better at home. And that doesn't, again, necessarily dictate that they're going to beat City. But if we were looking, again, stacking uh, the cons, uh, the pros are starting to stack up a little bit here for Bournemouth, maybe more than a lot of people are expecting. And that's something I'm looking to take advantage of this slate. And uh, in their history, though, something uh, I am a little bit concerned of is that they've only scored three goals against City in their entire history. Now, they've only been around for... Bournemouth has only been around for a few years, so you may not want to read too deeply into that. But yeah, um, I think... Bork has a lot of value this slate from only 3.7K. You're going to be able to get tons of saves. And if City continue to underperform without Fernandinho, along with Bournemouth continuing to overperform at home, I think that's just a little bit more positives than a lot of people are giving Borg, especially when we consider all the value keepers 
who I happen to like this late, which I'll get to a little bit later uh, in more in depth. But yeah, Boric, I'm definitely on side for. I'm going to be dropping off the Nathan Klein uh, bandwagon for the time being. I know he's only 3.6K. I think there's worse options. I think there's better options for cash, strictly cash. Uh, but yeah, in terms of if you're like, I desperately need someone to go with Boric for whatever reason, this clean sheet is very unlikely. But at the same time, you only need four to six saves and you're paying off. Uh, so I'm I'm not on the Klein train anymore. I was really big on him, and even more so, I'm off the midfield train. And conversely, I think a lot of people will be trying to jump on this train with Ryan Frazier and Jordan Ivey, and I don't hate it considering uh, the amount of minutes they're going to see. I would rather just stick with Josh King up front. Now, that being said, I uh, that's strictly uh, a GPP play that has nothing to do with cash whatsoever. Uh, on FanDuel, I wouldn't even suggest it. Now, uh, we have to keep rem reminding ourselves here that City are going to concede. It's just a matter of who to. And, uh, yeah, it, it's tough. I do like Liz Mosette again. Um, I could review. I should have done a little review, actually, of last slate. Of, I finished top 10 in King of the Pitch again. I was incredibly close. And I put on my red coat strategy again. Again, shout out to red coat 85. If you are a red coat, I have no idea why you're watching me, man or woman. Uh, I have no idea. And if you have no idea who red coat 85 is, step one, block them. Step two, uh, review other GPP entries. And I will keep talking about red coat until red coat reveals himself to me on a Twitter DM. So yeah, that's just uh, my uh, demand that I'm making over that. But yeah, Liz Musetta went with him last slate and. And he definitely paid off. Again, um, it was great that he scored a goal. And the 13.5 was a massive. But what that actually did was set me up for a GPP script that absolutely nobody else was into. It was only 1.6% owned as a true forward slot even. Uh, that's even more crazier. So, yeah, it allowed me to build a, a random card that literally nobody had. And I, it still did okay. It wasn't the best, obviously. Uh, I, uh, I got caught on a Crystal Palace clean sheet chase, unfortunately which uh, really uh, dumped that. But, uh, yeah, or actually the, the Rich Elson, I got caught with Rich Elson and Everton really crapped out on me. But, yeah, um, the uh, for this, it's going to come from somewhere, and maybe taking Josh King and GPP isn't the worst idea because you can get some 5.3K random build scripts. Uh, but as a whole, uh, you really just want to take that one shot. And for me, Ryan Frazier is too expensive for that one shot. He won't have enough of a floor. Uh, very similar. Like maybe, uh, maybe you could talk me into a GPP, but 7K is just too much for me. It's just quite simple. Too expensive. I'd rather spend up for a thousand more and try and get Kevin De Bruyne for multiple goals, which is very likely. Uh, so yeah. Um, City's never lost to Bournemouth. They're seven and zero versus Bournemouth in their career. Like I said, Bournemouth only scored scored three goals on them. Probably going to be four after this game. Um, and in their matchups, there's been there's uh, been at least three total goals in six of the seven games they've played each other. So I do like both teams to score. I do like City to score more than twice. I will say a uh, a two one three one Man City final score. Next game on the slate, we have Huddersfield traveling to Brighton. And this is another really interesting game because we have literally the worst team in the league in Huddersfield slowly starting to take a turn for the better. And we have Brighton, who was one of the better teams and a really good home team, mind you, really starting to take a turn for the worse. So technically, I know a lot of people are going to look at this and say Huddersfield are just really bad, but they're actually... A better an, a better of an away side than Brighton. They're uh, they're not even one of the top, the worst bottom five away sides in the entire league. So don't immediately sell Huddersfield out here again, especially for GPP. Um, they haven't scored an away goal in four straight, so I'm not necessarily looking for them to score another goal or at goals. Um, maybe one goal is a clean sheet breaker for anyone chasing Matt Ryan. I think that's an interesting take, but. I'm generally looking at the defense of Huddersfield for this one. I think uh, especially Losel is uh, where I'll be starting a lot of my builds this slate at only 4K. He's been tremendous. 
most of the season, really. He had some blips there with the Man Cities and the Chelsea's and the Liverpools and, you know, that kind of thing. But at the same time, he's not only been respectable, but put up double digits from slate winning salaries. So, yeah, I, I really don't mind the Huddersfield clean sheet chase this slate and a lot of that has to do with also his wingbacks now I'm less on the drum side of things uh, but I'm definitely much more on the Hadagajong side of things now the reason I say that is that drum has both these guys been around for a couple seasons drums actually pretty uh pretty pedigreed he, he has a world cup with germany uh so he's not just a nobody but uh i do like low a little bit more if he gets the start and i'm hoping he gets the start uh but hadagajong has been doing this for years now from less or less than 4.5k and always getting less than 10 more than five fantasy points this has just been his thing for years now obviously don't read too deeply into that he uh, didn't see a lot of minutes but yeah like legit this is what the guy does uh year after year uh, now, he hasn't seen a lot of time this season. I'm a little bit more concerned about that, obviously. Don't build him into your cards until you know he's starting. But if he is starting, definitely use some Hadagajong this late. I have no issue with him. Um, basically, either defense of this game, I think, is, is pretty tight. I'm less on the Matt Ryan side because I don't see him making as much saves as I do Losel. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think you can avoid the midfields. Maybe some Aaron Moy if he sees the start uh, from 5.4K. I would like to see him in an advanced position up the field. Uh, so if he is pushed up the field in an attacking position, definitely usable from 5.4K. Either format, really, uh, because he does take all the set pieces and penalty shots. So he does have goal upside. But uh, really... It's tough. I want to say use Carlin Grant and GPP. Uh, that's what really set me apart in the last uh, King of the Pitch that I almost took down. Uh, I'm less bullish on it this slate just because uh, I'm not necessarily sure about his minutes away from home. I'm not excited. Uh, but you still can use him at only 5.5K. It isn't the worst thing in the world. Now, Brighton, on the other hand, like I said, I do like the defenses on both sides here. Uh, but with... Uh, the it's tough with the uh, the shots. I prefer the shots, especially on FanDuel. So I think Losel is the better goaltender option of the pair. Uh, but I definitely wouldn't talk you out of Matt Ryan. This is one of my issues for this slate. Much like last slate, I'm finding a lot of the goalies are one or the other, and you can't complement your cards. Uh, so you're going to have to take one side or the other. And this is definitely a goalie game for me, where I'll be going with Brighton, uh, Matt Ryan, or Huddersfield, most likely Losel, and using a lot of naked Losel. If you ever hear me say or, or read uh, about me saying naked, that means by themselves, not stacked, not correlating, looking to acquire extra fantasy points in any way. So a naked Losel, I think, makes a lot of sense this slate. Uh, and for Brighton, the defenses, uh, I'm definitely not playing Bernardo from 5.1K, but Gailton Bong at 4.3K is easily one of my favorite defender plays of the slate. Super, super solid floor, uh, only 4.3K. Uh, this is cash, mind you, excuse me, cash, not GPP. I have no issue using Bong or Losel together in the same cash card the same can be said for matt ryan and hadergajong or low or or uh, i prefer not drum uh but yeah uh something like that uh basically i don't expect a lot of goals this game now that being said um with both pascal grobe out uh excuse me say both with pascal grobe out Knockard and Solly March should see really solid minutes on either side of the field. Now, Knockard looks like he will be jumping into the majority of the set pieces crosses, but he hasn't really played much this season. And on the contrary, Solly March is coming back from injury, played some minutes last game, is looking at 90 minutes this slate, and has had one of the more solid floors in the, the solid floors uh, all season. Uh, he's never really punched out a massive ceiling, but at the same time, uh, he's never cost a lot, and he's always going to not score a zero. Uh, I shouldn't say it. Yeah, see, he didn't. I told you. He's not going to score a zero. Solly March, don't do this to me. Uh, so, yeah, Solly March, again, one of my favorite plays this slate, along with Bong. Uh, I don't necessarily like Brighton to go out and do crazy, crazy things. 
but their salaries compared to their solid floor outing and potential upside against the worst team in the league playing at home, um, a lot to turn down. Uh, so yeah, I do like this pair for cash. Uh, and again, if you're going to go Sally March, you probably don't want to take Losel and cash just because uh, you're looking for a little bit of upside from March. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I really don't mind that. Now, there are issues with Brighton. Uh, they haven't won in seven straight, uh, three straight at home. They're winless. Uh, they've only won one of their past 12 games. Uh, they've only scored more than one goal in two of their previous 10 games. Low soul. But they are an incredible home away split team, like I was talking about with Bournemouth earlier. They've lost only four of their 14 EPL home games this season. Uh, and only three of their past ten uh, home games, which came against Liverpool, Chelsea, and Burnley. Three super super up, upscale teams. Uh, so uh, they've conceded only more than once uh, in two of their past ten home games. Uh, yeah, so it's like either defense here works. Uh, I really like Losel and then flipping that with the Brighton defense because uh, they or because Ryan is. 1.2k more expensive which i think makes a a big difference so yeah not a lot of offense in this game not a lot of ceiling so stick with the defense maybe the brighton wingers if you want to feature there uh one one two one either way kind of thing i don't see either team having a massive upside i would side with losel just because I think both teams are going to score, so you may as well get the cheaper goalie. But uh, Matt Ryan and GPP, uh, just because uh, Huddersfield are so bad, and that clean sheet is much more of a chase in GPP. Next game on the slate, we have Crystal Palace making the trip to Burnley. Interesting game. Palace have lost only one of their previous four games and uh, one of their previous five away games. Burnley has lost only one of their nine games, and they're undefeated in four straight games at home. We're running into two massive in-form teams at the moment, and what's more interesting to that is that neither of them really draw a lot of ownership off the hop, especially from any kind of a square player. They're not going to look at this game whatsoever. So I do like this game a lot. I think it has tons of fireworks to go. Uh, Palace has scored in 12 of their 14 away games this season and in seven straight away. They're going to score. Uh, I love Tom Heaton. You know I love me some Tom Heaton. This may not really be the week to chase him in GPP, though. Uh, they've got Palace has got eight goals in their last three away games. So not only are they scoring away, but they're scoring a lot recently. Uh, they're just a much better away side than they are at home. So they're not, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that at home uh, they don't score games don't get goals that, that, that was really bad english there's not a lot of goals in palace home games so uh they've won five of their 14 away games which may not sound like a lot but they've actually won only three of their 14 home games so they are a better away side than they are at home um now they have conceded as well in nine of their previous 11 away games so I think both teams are going to score again. You're, if you haven't noticed yet, I don't think there's going to be a clean sheet this late. There may be. We'll talk about it actually next game. Uh, but in terms of a uh, a clean sheet hunt, there really isn't one to run with this slate. And that hurts defense, defense more than it does keepers because at the end of the day, we can just keep slamming those value keepers over and over and over if we know no one's going to hit a true ceiling. But for defenders... That's tough because then you have to really start picking apart floors and hoping a guy that usually finishes at 8 fantasy points will actually finish at 14 because no one else caught a clean sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. So yeah, uh, I think Joel Ward's in play. I'm going to fade the Guiata chase this slate. Uh, Joel Ward has always been in play as a DFS player. He's missed a lot of this season, but with uh, Juan Binsaka out now for the next uh, foreseeable future, expect Joel Ward to jump back into play. 4.6K, 
not too much to ask for a guy who likes to get forward. Definitely not my favorite spot, especially for Palace. My favorite spot for Palace and some of my favorite midfield plays from this slate is their uh, their midfield core. Whether it's Townsend, Zaha, or Millie, even Max Mayer, it would surprise me to see him get a start here. Uh, Schulp isn't really necessarily something I'm looking at, but he, they're all in play. Burnley just love to allow crosses. They let everyone just cross, 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 cross all the time. So, yeah, I have no issue. I think I'll be drawing a lot on Milchevec and Cash uh, just because he does take the penalty shots as well. So it wouldn't surprise me uh, to see him get a little bit of ceiling uptick. Uh, at the same time, you can definitely use Townsend. Though at the same price as De Bruyne, I'm more likely to side with De Bruyne because uh, it's De Bruyne on Man City. Like I, You know, ownership is an issue there. So I think maybe Townsend in a, a GPP could be an interesting pivot. But uh, like I said... Um, they're all going to have a tremendous floor as this slate, so you, you really can't go wrong for double digits especially. Uh, Zaha is probably the least of the floor options, uh, but he still comes with tons of upside. He's playing incredibly well again. Uh, it, it's just, uh, yeah, I doubt you'll see that maybe closer to 14 this slate, but uh, yeah, uh, no problem there. And up front, I'm really concerned with their minutes, but... This is a big but. As mentioned, Crystal Palace are going to have a gazillion crosses this game because Burnley love to let everyone cross. Crystal Palace also happen to have the horse of all horses up front here with uh, Christian Benteke. Now, is Christian Benteke going to start? Really unlikely. Is he going to see lots of minutes? Really unlikely. If he happens to, he's instantly going to catapult himself into my top favorite forward GPP play of the slate. Simply because Palace are going to be crossing the ball in the double digit counts. And if you cross a ball at Benteke plus 10 times, he's probably going to get a few of them on net. Not to mention, he's a really nice guy and when he's on the field, people just like to give him penalty shots when he when they pop up. So yeah, uh, I don't mind Ben Teke from 4.7k. I doubt he's going to start though. It's really unlikely. Uh, but the minutes are just a concern for me. Bashui is a good option because he's shooting the ball, but he's coming off at super inopportune, inopportune minutes. So yeah, that's tough for me to side. And if anything... It kind of makes me take a little bit more of the Burnley side because I picture this happening. Crystal Palace going to cross the ball up. Burnley's going to clear the ball a lot. So uh, Heaton sees a lot of saves as it is. So it's not necessarily going to be dangerous shots. Yeah, I don't know. It's, a, it's tough right now because, yeah, Burnley are coming into this, like I said, really good form. They've scored in 11 of their 13 games. So as I mentioned, Palace has conceded in most of their away games. Burnley scored in most of their home games. Uh, yeah, their issue, like I said, uh, Palace should probably score. Uh, Burnley's kept only three clean sheets out of their 13 home games this season. And they've conceded in three straight home games as well. Uh, now... They've won five of their 13 home games, losing only two home games this season. In contrast, they've won only three of their 15 away games, and they've lost eight away games. So this is another one of those home away splits that's starting to build up. And this is nothing new. Burnley have literally stayed in the English Premier League by winning games 2-1 at home. That's just their thing that they do uh, for years and years and years. So it really wouldn't surprise me again to see that happen this late. I'm uh, up in the heat inside of things for 4.7K. He's probably going to concede, but at the same time, he does have that GPP upside for me that Guida is lacking. Uh, now, in terms of uh, the... Defenders, there's nothing here for me to look at. Uh, even for cash, I'd rather spend up or spend below. So, yeah, uh, naked heat and makes sense for me. The midfield is just, uh, I, in general, Burnley for me right now are a massive concern because of their minutes. And I don't say this because I'm a malicious, sick person and I want this, but we need some injuries here in Burnley. Otherwise, their minutes are going to be a complete nightmare. Johan Berg Goodmanson, JBG is not going to see enough minutes. McNeil and uh, Yo Johan are going to be taking each other off. And Ashley Westwood's going to be in the mix with those two. 
Robbie Brady ha- is a starter and should see 90 minutes. And if he was, he would be crossing the ball double digits every game. But he doesn't, and he's, he's a sub because everyone's too healthy. So, yeah, it's tough. It's really tough to pick the crossers from Burnley where it may just be easier to chase the goals on Burnley. So, yeah, I think uh, if you can catch a 90-minute game from Ashley Barnes coming back here to 90 minutes, that would be nice. Chris Wood isn't playing 90 minutes, and there's no one really else to talk about except Peter Crouch is playing for Burnley. He saw minutes last game. It would be so funny if he actually starts. I doubt it. Who knows? Again, kind of in the Benteke side of thing, if uh, Peter Crouch happens to start, put him in a GPP. They're going to smash the ball into the box here, double digits, just like Palace. So, yeah, uh, I think this slate, uh, there's going to be little defense, lots of production from this game. Both keepers are going to have massive floors, but limited ceilings because they're both going to concede. Uh, I have minutes con- minute concerns across the boards for both these teams. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the Palace midfielders and Cash and chase that Burnley guys in GPP, especially Tom Heaton. I think he has the upside and the floor uh, where Guaida only has the floor. Uh, so, yeah, final score, I'm going to say 2-1 Burnley, maybe even a 3-2, maybe one nothing. The simple fact for me here is that Burnley is going to win by a goal. Next game on the slate, we have Southampton traveling to Manchester United. Another really interesting game here. Um, Man United are just a better team with Scholzshire and at home. So there's a lot to re- consider here. Uh, we'll start with Southampton. No reason not to start with the away side as I usually do. And we'll start, uh, yeah, they've lost only one of their previous five away games. Uh, but conversely... They've won only one of their previous five games in general. Now, how is that possible? Southampton is the perennial team that just loves to tie everyone. They just go out and draw, draw, draw. Uh, Now, this season, they've actually done really bad against the big six teams. They've had five games against big six sides, and they've uh, not won any of them. They've only got a draw so far. So, uh, they should look to break that goose egg this slate. And they've scored in 11 of their 14 away games this season. Uh, So... Yeah, this is a team that you can look at. Now, uh, they've also kept a lot of their teams uh, under uh, two goals. A lot of their games, a lot of their oppositions under two goals. In fact, nine of their previous ten games, the opposition has only scored two or less goals. The only time that didn't happen was against City, obviously. Uh, So, yeah, this is a situation, again, where we are looking at a really sneaky, low-scoring team uh, with some pros stacking up where people aren't seeing them. Now, Angus Gunn, I'll set, I've said it a million times before. Uh, I'll say it a few times again. He's young, and he is the future English keeper star. He's as pedigreed as pedigree can possibly be. He's grown up coached by all of England's greatest ever, not just my, like time generation, Greatest ever keepers have all generational grown up around or been around Angus Gunn as he's grown. Uh, he's a future star. There, I've said it. Uh, and he, he will continue to make tons of saves this game and hopefully, as usual, keep teams under two or less goals, which we'll talk about here with United. Isn't that big of an ask this game? So I do like Gunn as a value keeper, and he is one of my more favored value keepers of the slate. Uh, yeah, the wingbacks, you got to avoid this, though, this slate. It's another naked keeper if you're going to go with them. They're just way too expensive. Uh Bertrand isn't going to pay off in cash scenario from 5.2K as a wingback against Man United. Now, I think a lot can be said about how bad Sanchez has been. Uh, So there is that, but Sanchez is usually on the other side of the field. So, yeah, I'm just not crazy about that. And one of the other issues is that Valerie isn't crossing the ball enough. Now, decent enough floor if he gets a clean sheet from 4.1K, but you're usually looking from that from 3.5 to 3.8K guys. So I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but uh, it is a, a fairly significant amount. So yeah, I'm not really interested there. 
Um, WordPress's salary is way, way too much. Uh, not interested against Man United. They shouldn't allow that much. In GPP, maybe he has a script or two that you could chase, but not in cash. If you're going to play anyone in cash at all this slate, really, not just from Southampton, but one of my ta- all-around uh, top cash plays this slate is going to be Holberg uh, on Southampton for only 4.7K. He just does all the things right from 4.7K, going to play 90 minutes against a team that should feed right into his floor. I expect a, a little bit closer to 10 this game for him. Uh now, is it someone I'm going to jump on instantly every single time? No. Uh, but in terms of that value, he's my favorite value cash play of the slate, I should say. Excuse me. Uh, so, yeah. If you're going to look for the super value, go 4.7. You can't miss with Holberg. But everywhere else is an absolute miss, especially up front. Avoid Southampton forwards. Southampton's probably going to concede, or excuse me, score. But... Uh, their minutes are just a nightmare up front, like so bad to the point that there's really no point. Now, interesting facts. I should say this again. Southampton should score, but their forwards are literally approaching years, calendar years, without scoring goals with S. Uh, so, yeah, Shane Long and Charlie Austin are sitting on one goal each for way too long. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not really uh, looking at the forwards whatsoever. Now, conversely... Like I mentioned earlier, this is a slate where you're going to have to pick one or the other. Your keepers don't complement. So, yeah, I think there's a lot to be said about a United clean sheet chase because the Southampton forwards are so darn bad at minutes and DFS in general. They're so untargetable that it makes the other team good targets. Now, Man United is obviously undefeated in 11 straight home games, but... They haven't won in back-to-back home games as well. Uh, They've only lost once at home all season, winning 7 of the 13. To converse that, uh, they've lost 4 away and won 9 away. So they're actually a better away side than they are at home, despite their only one loss at home. They just haven't found as many wins. Now, I think a lot of that can be attributed to Mourinho previous in the season. Uh, because they've won 9 of their 11 previous games. So they're definitely going out here and winning. Now, there's a big but here. United has conceded in 4 of their previous 5, 8 of their previous 10 games, and 11 of their 13 previous home games. So what this tells me is that they're going out here looking to score goals and not really looking to defend. And you can further that by looking at DeGay's numbers and seeing how many saves he's actually making uh, in comparison to previous seasons. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't read too deep into that. That was just a defensive battle all the way around. But, uh, yeah, in terms of a keeper chase the slate, it's probably got to be David DeGay simply because Southampton are so piss poor at forwards in DFS. It just instantly makes DeGay the top keeper play of the slate. Now, I know what I just said. I know they just conceded a bunch of games, but what I'm hoping is that's going to draw people away from United and that we're going to be able to get David DeGay in cash uh, for a win and David DeGay in GPP for a clean sheet ceiling. Uh, So either or, DeGay is my favorite keeper play of the slate. Now, defenders... To further that, where there's so many keepers to say that I think you have to put in naked by themselves, he does have viable defensive stacking options, whether it's Ashley Young, a really viable cash option at 5.8K. Uh, you can go Shaw and Young, both of them, as a clean sheet chase. You can either go Dallas, who looks like he's going to be playing center midfield for the next little bit. Now, I know his minutes haven't been the most ideal in the entire league, but at the same time, from 4.4K on Man United at home against Southampton, uh, who are very attacking minded now and give up a lot in the back end. Uh, I do like Dalit uh, for either format for 4.4K. Tons of risk uh, for uh, a cash option, but in GPP, I really don't mind going Dalit, Shaw, and uh, Young and hoping to make sure uh, or hoping Dalit gets the 60 minutes and comes off around 75. And you really don't have to worry because from 4.4K, he'll still get 8 to 10 fantasy points, which is really all you need from that salary range. So, yeah, I don't mind Dalit, but obviously I'd rather roll with some Ashley Young. Uh, And it's tough. I don't like saying it. It's ugly, but Paul Pog was definitely my play of the slate. 9.7K, you, you like, 
he's going to go off. He's so obscenely much better of a home player than he is away. I think a lot of people are going to feel burned from him at 9.3 last slate and only finishing at 12. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting to see what people do from here with Paul Pogba and builds because that doesn't offer a lot for forwards, obviously. So, you're going to have to pick and choose here. And if you do go Pogba, you definitely can't go DeGay and Young in cash together. You can't take these three. It just completely ruins your salary ranges, uh, especially for any kind of forward that you're looking to take. There would be nothing there. So, yeah, I don't, uh, I'm don't. i not shying away from using Pogba. I'm going to try and go over the field with the hope that people are going under him this slate. Now, Sanchez is just bad. Don't use him. Fade him. He can go out and get two assists and a goal and it will not matter because he you can let people take that every single time and you cannot take it every single time and that one time it's going to happen they'll give you their money back the 99 out of 100 other times he doesn't go off so yeah sanchez is just a long-term play don't play sanchez uh but you can play Lukaku, uh, and further to the further that you can play Rashford. Uh, I don't mind Rashford, hoping he gets to start and back in the 90 minutes now that he was limited last game, and uh, even stacking the pair of them in cash or excuse me in GPP. Don't do it in cash in GPP or even all three. I think is super low owned. Now, they, like I said earlier, if you take these three, you can't take the United defense. You're going to have to choose one or the other. Now, that being said, Gunn is really good. Um, and I think United are a lot less healthy than they're leading on. A lot less healthy. Uh, especially up front and in the midfield. Now, leading on, obviously, you, you'd have to be either not looking or an idiot to not see. They're not healthy here. But, like I mentioned earlier with the stacks, the cons are starting to stack for United here. Sanchez isn't good enough, and he's going to be seeing the majority of the minutes, or he's going to be cutting off someone else's minutes and his own minutes, so making another player bad as well. Uh, all their midfield is going to be coming off for DFS purposes. Maybe McTominay if you want to. I used him last night in cash, and it actually paid off really handsomely. Uh, just because I figured he's going to be getting 90 minutes from 3.3K, you couldn't really go wrong. So, yeah, I'm not as keyed in about this slate. And, like, everyone else is just minutes shy. Lukaku, if you want, in uh, GPP, I think he makes sense. But 8.5K is just a massive ask for someone who's arguably unhealthy. He's If he, like, didn't score those two goals last slate, he was scoring a zero. Goals are worth 12. He scored two goals and played 90 minutes. So, yeah. Um, the yellow card obviously played a lot into that. But if you add that yellow card on, there's a yellow card's worth. There's basically a yellow card's worth. There's another basic yellow card's worth. So, like, that's just his usual stuff. So, the question should be, do you think Lukaku can literally go out and raw points a slate? Because if he can't raw points a slate, even from 8.5K, he's probably not going to pay off. And further that with Sanchez, just a waste, complete waste. So, yeah, uh, Rashford, Lukaku, Pogba, uh, Lukaku, Pogba, Rashford, uh, Lukaku, and then the least favorite of my stacks would be uh, Rashford, Pogba. I don't see them correlating as well. But yeah, uh, I do think that United can score twice. But with them being so poor as of late, yeah, they've played Southampton a lot. A lot. A lot. A lot. Here's the scores between the previous 10 games between Man United and Southampton. Going back between now and 2014. 2-2 draw. 0-0 draw. one nothing United win. 0-0 zero, zero draw. 2 nothing United win, which happened in September 2016. They haven't beaten Southampton since September 2016. one nothing Southampton win. 3-2 United win, which is kind of an outlier, but still one goal difference. one nothing Southampton win. 2 nothing United win. 1-1 one, one draw. So, the majority of these games, first of all, outside of that 2-0 United win, 
excuse me, which happened in, so they haven't, yeah, which happened in uh, September 2016, was the only time in their previous 10 games where they've beaten Southampton by more than a goal. Now, does that say that, like, what's instantly going to happen in this game? No, but it's definitely something we can bet on, or at least when we're considering things, realize that, okay, so if United scores twice, Southampton's probably going to score once. If United scores three times, there's a chance here that Southampton could score twice just going by previous history because they've scored twice on them before and United has been conceding how much in the previous, however many games. So again, this is a GPP chase kind of, but yeah, I, I'm building this slate, or I, I should say this game into this slate as if United wins, it's going to be by a goal. If they don't win, it's going to be a draw. Uh, now, I think what the final score is going to be is one nothing United, maybe a 2 nothing. I'd be very surprised if United wins this game by more than two goals. So a 3 nothing seems a little bit big of an ask, but a 3-1. So if United scores three goals... I think it's almost like a statistical guarantee that Southampton is going to score a goal. Um, so that's just my take on the game. Um, that may compare it to low scoring ceilings. Uh, depends who does what through what. Uh, that's why I like the United defensive chase maybe a little bit more than uh, the Rashford and Lukaku. Maybe a lot more. Maybe all the way more. Uh, Pogba is still going to do really well. If you can fit a GPP card, probably my favorite GPP stack this slate. It's going to be DeGay with a couple defenders. Maybe just one. Uh, young probably. Uh, maybe Young and Dalot. And Pogba. Uh, and that's going to be my one of my favorite stacks of this slate. Uh, so final score, I'm going to say 1-0, 2-1, Man United win. Man United will not win this game by more than two goals. I'll be very surprised if they win this game by more than one. Or, but uh, And I say that two goals mean separation between the two. And I'll be very surprised if they beat Southampton by more than a separation of plus one. Next game on the slate, we have Cardiff traveling to Wolves. Not too much to say, really. Cardiff are slowly slipping. Both these teams, uh, a contrast to the Crystal Palace Burnley game, these two teams are both falling off the charts really quickly. Cardiff looks like they're going to be relegated this season. They're uh, winless in back to back games, they've lost five of their previous eight. Uh, they've lost nine of their 13 EPL away games this season and only have two away wins all season. However, they have scored in four of their previous five games and five of their previous seven away. Or maybe that's, sorry, I think that's both four. Uh, they've scored in four of their five away and five of their seven away games. Uh, so they can score goals. They probably are going to score goals. We'll talk about that more when we start talking a little bit more about Wolves. Uh, but yeah, I think Etheridge does have some hidden hidden value this slate uh for such a cheap keeper if we look at all the cheap keepers he's the only one that's facing a team that isn't legitimately a big six side that's legitimately been in the league for years so wolves aren't bad but they're just not that deserving to immediately plummet a team uh down to that kind of uh salary for the keeper so i do think he has some love not a lot. Maybe some Joe Bennett with him, but I'd rather see him at the 3.5, 3.7 range. Maybe some Bamba. Uh, you know Wolves are going to be crossing the ball. The gym has an awful lot. So, yeah, uh, you can get away with some Sol Bamba for a 4.1K. Uh, in either format, I'd probably f prefer him on FanDuel. Um, Rawls, I'm hoping he starts getting back into the picture here at only 3.6K. He is the set pieces taker behind... Um, uh, Camarasa. Now, quick word on Camarasa. He's here on loan from, I think it's Real Betis. Does it say on here? No, I don't think it will. Uh, it should. I'm going to say Real Betis uh, in Spain. I know he's here from Spain. Uh, but yeah, the yeah, there it is. Real Betis in Spain. So his situation is, is that he got hurt. Cardiff cleared him to play. The Cardiff medical staff has cleared him to play. But the real Betis medical team has not cleared him to play. And there's a lot of speculation coming in right now saying that uh, real Betis is literally trying to crash and burn Cardiff uh, for the benefit of their own player's future. Uh, just simply don't play Camarasa on such a crap team uh, because if he gets hurt, it's going to be a huge waste of time. Camarasa was sent with a lot more promise. Uh, not necessarily him, but... 
but from the club, uh, we're promising much better results. So I think Real Bad to send him over expecting a lot more uh, positive growth scenario, and there's been literally none. So they have no issue just sitting him and not letting him play uh, because they're not risking him where they're just risking otherwise. And so I'm hoping Rawls get ba- gets back into the mix uh, and starts taking more set pieces. If he starts from 3.6K, he is an absolute cash lock. You can even use him in some GP and hope he gets close to double digits, which would be takedown material. And uh, up front, I do like Niasi a lot uh, for GPP. I think he isn't going to play 90 minutes, uh, but at the same time, I do think he holds a really interesting uh, build that uh, will set you up for a script that no one else will have. Uh, so yeah, 4.9K, I think you can risk that in GPP, uh, some Niasi, get him in. Uh, he didn't play uh, because of his loan agreement, so don't read too deeply into that. So yeah, uh, think about getting some Niasi back into the mix here this late. For Wolves, as mentioned, team in absolute free fall right now. Uh, they're winless in three straight. However, they've lost only one of their previous six, uh, which was last game versus Huddersfield, uh, and they've only lost three of their previous ten. Now, the issue here, especially with Rio Patricio, is they've conceded in their t- in ten of their previous 11, 11 games, excuse me, and they've conceded in four of their previous five, nine of their previous ten, and eleven of their previous fourteen home games this season. So they're conceding a lot at home, which makes Rio Patricio's salary for either format an absolute bust. You can drop down for literally a thousand less and get the exact same floor and ceiling from Tom Heaton. So there's just no reason to play Patricio this late whatsoever. Easy fade. To further that, his wing back and defense options are really bad. Doherty continues to boggle my mind as how he makes this kind of salary in DraftKings. Um, I don't like calling DraftKings out, but this is just a huge mistake. This is a massive mistake. It's been going on for a while. His salary should be closer to 4K simply because he does squat all, even with a clean sheet bonus. So continue to fade Doherty. If you want, use Johnny. I'm not that interested. Again, because there's no clean sheet, I'd rather chase something like that. And he doesn't really have the same kind of floor as like a Hatter Gajong, who may not even start. Or you get that kind of, like I've been mentioning, the guys who get five to eight fantasy points and will never get zero and never cost more than four or five K. So yeah, uh, use Johnny if you'd like, uh, but I think there's just way better options the midfield uh i think mutinho makes a ton of sense for cash this slate at only 6.8k he's way too cheap uh there's maybe four or five guys in his kind of like you can use this for cash because they all do the same thing same role but he's the cheapest of the bunch and he's maybe in the best position of the bunch so yeah i love me some mutinho from five point or six point eight k that would be really awesome five point eight six point eight k uh one of my top cash plays for this slate definitely uh get those garbages out of there sorry i'll start to rebuild my uh cash here uh where are we low so right yeah uh, we'll, we'll keep it there for now yeah so um yeah Jimenez at home, final talk on Wolves, sorry. Uh, Jimenez is excellent at home, much better home player than he is away. GPP, fire up some Jimenez, even some uh, Moutinho to Jimenez. I think that's a really smart stack. Uh, Jimenez is one of my favorite GPP plays this slate. I think he has one of the highest multi-goal props of the slate. So definitely get him into some of your cards, 8.9K. I don't think you're going too wrong with that one. So, yeah, uh, these teams only played once in their history, uh, they both score both teams have scored in both teams okay let me rephrase that again start again in half of these teams games this season so both teams half their games both teams have scored in those games so we can kind of expect again here that both teams are going to score the vast majority of cardiff games this season have seen at least three total goals so we're talking two two one three nothing games uh so yeah i'm looking at a two one two two three two kind of game here game stack this game get in on it cardiff are going to score wolves are going to score they're probably both going to score multiple goals if 
they aren't. I do like Etheridge to see the least amount of goals of that. But yeah, get Jimenez in there. I think he makes one of the better plays. And even if Rawls is starting, uh, I think uh, Moutinho and Rawls together in a cash card is probably one of the better cash plays for this slate. Especially from this salary. I will say that again. Rawls, jeez. Get him in if he start with no Camarasa. So, uh, yeah, final score, I'll say 2-1 Wolves. Uh, Jimenez, two goals. Final game of the slate. We have Newcastle making the trip into London to play West Ham. Interesting game. Newcastle has only won twice away this season, but... They've only lost five times away this season. They like to draw games away from home. Now, they are riding a back-to-back game-winning streak here. They are undefeated for three straight games, and they've lost only one of their previous six games, winning four of those six games. So they're riding some form at the moment. They are doing really well. Uh, they actually haven't won, though, in five straight away games, losing three of those five away games. And uh, they've only won two of their previous 10 away games this season. So they're not necessarily as good as uh, I would like away from home. But, uh, yeah. Debraca has done the same thing over and over and over all season. And what that thing has been has keeping basically every team really low. Uh, so West Ham aren't very good. They're probably not going to score a lot of goals. Debraca is too cheap. What more do you need from that? So, yeah, Debraca, definitely one of my top three keeper plays this slate. Probably two behind David De Gea. Uh, so, yeah, definitely get some Debraca in there just because uh, he is too cheap in a game that uh, is not going to be as high scoring with lots of shots. So, he should get lots of saves. Uh, and <clears throat> to further that, if you're looking for a good defensive stacking option, and in general, one of my favorite defensive plays all around this slate is a Fabian Char from 4.3K. So one of the issues here is that he is going to be a little bit recency biased for GPP because he has been doing so well as of late. But he has all the, the relevance in the world for either site. He has tons of defensive peripherals. He plays a position that wouldn't immediately draw tons of ownership. He has tons of offensive peripherals. So yeah, Fabian Scherer, 4.3K. Lock him into your cash cards this late. If you can get him in there with some Rawls, uh, you're absolutely flying. Again, I know Rawls, I'm, uh, this is hoping he's starting. Uh, but uh, yeah, if this ends up happening, like... <clears throat> tons of money to left uh, left to spend on forwards. Tons of money. So, yeah, uh, back to the Newcastle West Ham uh, talk here. Yeah, uh, you can play some Nick, uh, some uh, Matt Ritchie in cash. He's definitely not my favorite cash option, but uh, he's definitely up there at the same time. Uh, if he does play wing back, I'm less less uh, ideal on him just because he tends to come off the field in those games. And uh, he is kind of riding this uh, on-off, on-off thing. So I do expect him to come off early this slate, which is a little bit disappointing, making him one of my lesser cash options. But Ka Isaac Hayden is j up there just as well. Uh, with a Holberg, you can use him and Holberg in cash together. I think that's really smart, uh, especially if there's no Rawls. Uh, Isaac Hayden's one of my top value uh, cash plays for the slate. And Almiron's way too cheap at only 5.2K for GPP. Now, I know uh, for cash, he isn't really a floor player at this moment, but 5.2K GPP. Get him in there. Really interesting. I love it. And uh, finally, uh, Rondon uh, up front. I should actually mention to uh, Longstaff continues at only 3.7K uh, to be another incredible, if you haven't heard me say this already, cash option for Newcastle. Uh, 3.7K. Get him into your cards. I don't expect a goal this slate, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, five to eight fantasy points is definitely not out of the question for Longstaff. From 3.7K, you're literally risking nothing. So if you're down in that range and you're wondering what to do, just plug in some Longstaff and you'll be fine. Finish off the Newcastle talk with Rondon playing 90 minutes against West Ham. Really hard to hate. Uh, any 90-minute player in the late hammer game is always fun because you can rely on it to know that you're going to get him for sure as a starter and potentially some lesser ownerships because it is in the later game. 
Uh, so yeah, West Ham, uh, they're actually doing really well this season at home, which is a complete buck of their normal trend. They've won six of their 14 home games this season. Uh, they have lost five, uh, so that is a little bit concerning. Uh, they've won only uh, one of their previous five, but at the same time, they've lost only two of their previous five. So lots of drawing going on. Uh, they're undefeated in four straight home games. They've lost only one of their se- previous seven at home, and they've won four of them So uh, of those seven. So yeah, th- they are playing quite well at home recently and they've lost only three of their previous 10 at home so this is a good home team that you really can't sleep on and i hate to say that but uh fabianski is going to see tons of saves his salary is a little bit concerning i think uh, i would have him as a good keeper option is he my favorite no but he's definitely up there from that salary range is a little bit concerning that's the only thing for me i think you're better off chasing david de gea uh from that kind of salary range uh, but yeah, in their defense is lacking for DFS. I'll be honest, across the board, West Ham, you really can't play them. And this is another reason why I like Newcastle so much. The reason you can't really play West Ham is their minutes are absolutely shot everywhere. Every player that's supposed to do anything is coming off the field. Whether it's uh, Cresswell would be coming off from Masuaku or Zabaleta. Uh, Antonio, I think he did play 90 minutes last game, didn't he? But yeah, he uh, got a yellow card and basically scored a zero. Uh, but so yeah, maybe he looks like he has a little off on off on thing going his, on his own here. So yeah, uh, maybe he's a GPP option if you're looking for that. But again, 90 minutes are just impossible to come by. He didn't even play last game. Snodgrass didn't feature last game. Uh, so yeah, it's where are we going to find them? Where are we going to find that 90 minute guy that we can rely on? That's going to do really well. Okay. There's all their attackers. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. No. Uh, he's definitely not playing Andy Carroll. Oh, Andy Carroll played 90 minutes against Man City last game. Who would have thought? Uh, oh, he didn't take yellow card either. That's nice. Good for him. Good for you, Andy. Uh, maybe jump on some Andy Carroll if you want. Uh, that's just one of the reasons why I like Debracka so much this late. And I like, uh, Newcastle. It's just because West Ham are really bad at DFS. That isn't saying they can't do it. It's just not the most optimal selection. So yeah, uh, I do like Newcastle a lot. They're very two evenly matched historical teams. Uh, Newcastle's got the predictability, so I'm taking them in cash, and I'll see if I can find some random starters uh, for a late West Ham pivot in GPP. This is the late game, remember that, and I showed you those minutes. You can't trust that with West Ham. You just can't do it. I know some people like to find uh, some uh, progress and conflict. It's just not there. There's too much confusion, too much mayhem. So, yeah, I'm going to say 2 nothing Newcastle, maybe 2-1. Uh, they're just better in form, so that's why I'm going with them. Simple as that. Final 2 nothing Newcastle, DeBracca, keeper play of the slate. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Keep an eye out for me. Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter. Get over at on Twitter. Uh, make sure to hit me up there. Any questions? Like our videos. Comment. Subscribe. Rotopros.com. Articles. Top right hand corner. Uh, there's yeah. Scroll down. Uh, and uh, you'll see articles. All of it's free. Get in there. Uh, we post stuff every day. Content coming up all the time. So uh, jump in our Slack. We got a little bit of a free trial going on. So absolutely, people, please join our community. Get involved here. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again here next weekend. And then we got some Champions League following that. So good luck, everyone. Much love and take care. <laughs>